Hello, my name is John Osaski and I'm the osteo preparator for the Smithsonian's Vertebrate Osteology Lab. My job is to prepare animal skeletons for the Smithsonian's Vertebrate Research Collections. We have over a million complete or partial skeleton specimens of mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles in our natural history collections. Each year I get thousands of new specimens from all over the world, ranging in size from the tiniest hummingbirds to huge whales. These specimens are an important record of the biodiversity of the planet, and our collections of skeletons are used by scientists from all over the world to study many aspects of vertebrate biology. Although I'm the person responsible for preparing skeletons, the actual work of cleaning them is done by our colony of carnivorous dermestid beetles. Dermestids are small beetles, about one centimeter long, found throughout the world. They are its super sanitation engineers, cleaning up dead animal and plant material wherever they find it. Adult beetles have strong mouth parts capable of removing the toughest tissue from bones and shells. And the worm-like larvae can wiggle into small cavities in the tiniest skeletons. Dermestids only eat soft tissue and leave intact even the most delicate skeletal structures. In the osteology lab, I have close to a million beetles voraciously cleaning away muscle and connective tissue from any specimens I give them. Female dermestids lay eggs on the soft tissue of a dead animal. Larvae hatch from the eggs in about three days and become adults about 30 days after that. Adults live about three months. Dermestids are voracious feeders and can clean the skeleton of a small mammal, like a field mouse, in a matter of hours. A large animal, such as an antelope, can take the dermestids between one and six months. Sometimes small bits of tissue are too hard or distasteful even for these super cleaning machines and humans must complete the job. For example, we have to degrease skeletons of fish or marine mammals in a weak ammonia solution similar to what you might use to mop a kitchen floor. After a specimen is cleaned and dried, we carefully box it up, catalog it with a unique identifying number, and store it in a museum drawer where it is available to researchers or put on display for visitors. So the next time you see uh, skeletal specimens on display at the Zoo or Natural History Museum, I hope you have a better appreciation of what went into producing the, those specimens and, and what their other uses may be.